Hello everyone, this is Kastoraptorio, and it's time for another talk. I did mention in my Addressing the United Nations UN Global Compact for Migration video, which I uploaded two days ago, and if you haven't already, you should watch it and also give the videos I give as links in the video description a try. Uh, they are very good. I mentioned that I would be be talking about the November 30 earthquake that rattled Anchorage, Alaska last week. Before I do, I would like to mention that I was a participant in the Hillsdale College telephone to town hall meeting that began at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time tonight. Uh, tonight is December the 6th, 2018. If you have a way of accessing that assembly, uh, even after it's taken place, uh, Hillsdale College probably will have it on their uh, YouTube channel. I think it has will be has been a very engaging conversation um, about addressing the education crisis in America and well, really all over the West. As I am very busy during the day in these times, I probably won't be able to finish this video before it takes place. Um, I'm starting it before, but probably have to work after. I do have a lot to talk about and a lot to do on the sides. Um, but if I can add a link to it in this vlog's description after the fact, I will do so. The question that I sent to Hillsdale was, uh, as I wrote down... What is Hillsdale's perspective and approach on relaxing the demands and restrictions placed on very young children through high school aged kids by their schools and approach to restoring recess and unstructured play to them? I know that free and unstructured non-micromanaged play and negotiation between peers has been massively ripped from our formative years. I think it's one of the most important things for the West to restore to its children, alongside stable heterosexual marriages once more. So for all the kids out there upset that they can no longer enjoy the freedom to roam around uh, the neighborhood, uh, even the city, the, the woods and friends' houses, with their friends, and away from these overstructured schools that really don't help you towards an adult life at all anymore. I do want to let you all know that there are adults in this world trying to bring that back. That said, let's move on to the topic of earthquakes for tonight. So I assume that most of you are aware of what earthquakes are. They are the shocks and vibrations of the planet's crust that occur when there is sudden motion along tectonic plate boundaries. This here is a picture from Google Images that I downloaded for not only this talk, but also for that presentation on volcanoes and supervolcanoes that I gave to the Geological Society on November 14th um, of this year, which I will post a version of on YouTube. It's just going to take me a while. Now, I especially like this map of the Earth's tectonic plates because it shows uh, not only the boundaries themselves, but the types of boundaries along each plate's edge. The yellow dots are hotspots of earthquake activity, and Anchorage, Alaska is on the edge of a convergent boundary, in a region where the Pacific plate is sliding under the North American plate. Now this isn't happening at uh, every point in the Pacific North American plate boundary, it's just in this little region. Transform faults are regions where two tectonic plates are sliding, kind of grinding past each other as they move in different directions. The only relatively gentle plate boundary is a divergent boundary, like for example the Mid-Atlantic Ocean Ridge, where plates are spreading away from each other as new crust material is emerging from the Earth's mantle. Alaska, like California, and like the Cascade Range in the northwest US, and um, 
Southwest Canada, is no stranger to earthquakes. In the last hundred years, just one hundred, Alaska has experienced 14 earthquakes with a magnitude of 6.0 and above, the 14th being this most recent one, the uh, November 30th one. Earthquake magnitude is measured by assigning the amount of earth shaking and damage uh, a, any one earthquake produces on the famous Richter scale. Seismologists assess every earthquake's power on a scale of 1 to 10, with each whole number representing an earthquake 10 times more powerful than the one than, than one of the number below it, which would mean a 7.0 magnitude earthquake, like the Anchorage earthquake that caused severe structural damage, but no identified casualties yet. Uh, I will look into that to see if that's changed. This earthquake was a hundred times more powerful than Alaska's much more common earthquakes of magnitude 5. In fact, Alaska is hit with around 45 magnitude 5 or 6 earthquakes each year. One of the primary reasons why we see fewer casualties from earthquakes in Alaska, as opposed to, say, California, is because Alaska is comparatively sparsely populated and uh, its residents have had to be not only used to earthquakes in the region, but especially prepared since there are not a lot of resources available in such a cold and remote region. This here is one of many common photos of a roadway shattered, broken, by the November 30 earthquake. There are also pictures all over the internet of homes, shops, and more areas broken apart and rattled. This is what any village, any city, any region that is near an active plate boundary is going to have to deal with from time to time. So if you do live in a place where there are earthquakes, where there is frequent tectonic activity, uh, volcanoes is another one, and um, hurricanes as well, um, referring to earthquakes, even if they're only large enough to be noticeable. It's worthwhile, and if you're the head of a family, the father, the parent of a fam in a family, it is actually your responsibility to look into the history of the region's geological events and prepare uh, your family for, to the extent that you can, for what might come. Have a small suitcase of survival supplies. Uh, rations, uh, identification papers, medical records, and uh, other essential things like this. You will be shocked at how many people forget these things. Um, ha so have this survival pack that you can just grab and run with. Have an escape plan should you ever need to evacuate. Oh, and have warm, dry clothing as well. And also, be prepared to abandon your vehicle if you are going to have to, as some people did when the road cracked from under underneath them. Okay. Uh. Now this next part I'm recording at midday and uh, later in the evening. I've still been having to empty my computer of its... Um, overloaded files. It's, oh, you're hearing my, hearing my cat eat in the background. Uh, I'm going to need to get a new computer soon. I, I actually have a laptop that I tried to take a video on. It's probably going to be of better quality than this one, so I'll be probably switching to, a, to that computer soon. Not quite yet. Still have, to, still have some setting up to do. Um, but the rest of this I'm recording on December 7th. And this morning, I was looking at reports of several earthquakes ranging from magnitude 4.0 to 4.5 and 6, with epicenters, on average, about 10 miles away from Anchorage. Looking at the Richter scale, earthquakes of magnitudes 4 and 5 will be felt by people, but tend to do only slight amounts of damage. Of course, the region is just trying to pick up 
from the pieces of the 7.0 earthquake one week ago. Seismologists have said that Alaskans should be prepared for aftershocks to last for months. Uh, these aftershocks are smaller earthquakes, uh, many of them just large enough to cause um, some damage, not much. I will follow the larger parent earthquake, uh, occur in roughly the same area as the uh, crust is adjusting to the uh, displacement caused by the first quake, the first motion. So along the fault line there's a, there will be a, a series of smaller shifts to readjust. Earthquakes don't originate at the surface. They originate deep underground in this actual point of the first shift uh, as the plates are either colliding or scraping against each other is called the focus of the earthquake. earthquake. Whereas the center point of the earthquake's shaking on the surface is called the epicenter. That's what the epicenter is. But the actual subterranean origin is called the earthquake's focus. So, uh, to kind of wrap up, I'm going to read from an article published by the Alaska Earthquake Center in Fairbanks, uh, written by an Ian Dickinson. So, geologists and seismologists from the University of Alaska, I'll, I'll put a link to this article below. It is from uh, almost a week ago, but it is pretty good. I still think there are no confirmed casualties, but that may still change, especially with the number of uh, aftershocks coming. We will see how this all plays out. But um, So, I quote from the article, A magnitude 7.0 earthquake struck just seven miles north of Anchorage at 8.29 a.m. on Friday morning. This would be Friday, November the 30th. At a depth of about 27 miles. So, remember, remember the, the focus, the actual point of origin of an earthquake, takes place deep in the Earth's crust. The earthquake caused power outages, damage to roads and buildings, and closures of schools, businesses, and government offices. There is no official count of casualties yet, but hospitals reported receiving two patients with life-threatening injuries and dozens of less serious cases, including broken bones, injuries from falls, and lacerations from broken glass. Lacerations are just cuts, or maybe deep cuts, I'm not sure if there's any distinction. There have been no reported deaths. And again, one of the reasons that Alaskans would be more uh, aware of... Uh, and again, one of the reasons you'll see less, ca less casualties from earthquakes among Alaskans uh, as opposed to, say, Californians or uh, other places where earthquakes are quite common is because with so few resources and with a harsh environment, they do have to be more prepared for them. This was the largest earthquake to strike near Anchorage since the 2016 M7.1 uh, the capital M before a scale means magnitude, Iniskin earthquake. Because this quake, uh, the November 2018 Anchorage one, was so much closer, the impacts to Anchorage and Matsu were far more severe and widespread. In the first hours, the picture was unclear, but damage reports included the following. Seward Highway closed at milepost 112 due to a landslide. Oh yes, earthquakes can trigger landslides. Uh, so, in, uh, in, in tundra environments, where the permafrost is, where you have uh, permanently frozen soil very close to uh, the surface of the soil, the plants can't, the plant roots can't dig down very deep, and so uh, plants, vegetation has a very limited ability to hold soil together, particularly on slopes. Now in California, where they've had a lot of fires destroy a lot of the vegetation, uh, also you got plant roots not holding the soil together in that case because they've been killed by fire. But when you have uh, any case of loose soil or rocks 
and you get a shake, yeah, you can get a landslide. Volcanic eruptions can do it too. Um, I mean, and when it's combined with water, you get a mudslide, as we saw last winter in California. And with the number of fires they had, they those are coming again. Uh, Anchorage, Alaska, and surrounding regions. Also, water mains ruptured and non-structural damage to terminals at the Anchorage airport. Not surprising. Significant road damage, including the international road on ramp, a roof or ceiling collapse at a key bank in South Anchorage, damage and flooding at the Alaska Railroad headquarters. Yeah, um, a shift in the crust can also really mess with the uh, hydrology. So you can get flooding even in areas where uh, normally it's not so vulnerable to flooding. So these are not surprising. Um, casualties are surprisingly small, but damage is quite immense. So those are just some of the uh, representative examples of the early reports. Uh, reading from this article again. So meanwhile, the Anchorage School District asked parents to pick up their children, if possible, um, right after the earthquake hit. Students at some schools were moved to other locations that have power. Why they're making school a priority at all, I don't understand. They should just focus on, uh, well, I mean, it's been a week now, but the first priority should be getting everyone to safety. I know a lot of buildings very quickly uh, went out of power, out of lights. Um, school is really not the priority, especially with the quality of public education these days. And that actually brings me back to uh, Hillsdale College and their uh, charter school initiative program. Now, uh, so I did take place in the Hillsdale College Telephone Town Hall meeting to download, uh, or watch that, uh, to watch that meeting, uh, if you'd like to watch how it played out. That took place on the evening of December 6th, 2018. You can go to hillsdale.edu slash townhall. Uh, and if you are interested in Hillsdale College's, Hillsdale College's charter school initiative to instruct America's youth in core American values and thinking for themselves, um, I listened to the entire uh, Cullen conference. They have some amazing programs and amazing ideas. Uh, they have online classes and lots of resources for college-age kids, as well as parents of young kids uh, as an alternative to the lefty prisons the government calls public schools. Unfortunately, the town hall meeting did not make it to my question in their span of time. Uh, maybe I waited too long to phone in, although it was only about 30 or 40 minutes when I did. But I did leave a message and I will get back to my viewers with what information I can dig up, what uh, answers I can find. One of the things that concerns me greatly is the corruption of the sciences by politics. And so I'm working hard to try and be a counter to that. Um, I'm actually trying to enter the teaching profession right now, although since I didn't go into it uh, first in my undergraduate, I went for environmental science although I kind of had enough knowledge of that to begin with, but, you know, everyone keeps saying there, there's there's so much propaganda and, and pushing, go to college, go to college, when, I mean, if you're not going for some super specialized and uh, high uh, workload degree, something like uh, medicine or engineering or law, then, it's uh, usually better to just go to trade school. Unfortunately, many of us figure that out too late. So I kind of have to take a side road, but I will probably get there. In the meantime, I will talk as much as I can about science with the goal of truth seeking rather than political gain. As just like many of you, I am completely exasperated with politics. Uh, in any case, I will be back and we will talk again. This is Kessel Raptorial, signing out for now.
出ない。